This thing tries to cheat me every time. It tries to race me. It said I had a minute to go. And then 59, 58. It does a little countdown. And next thing it says, it's waiting on me. So <laughs> I'm here. I just had to finish making my cup of coffee. Dave here. How are you? Today is the 19th of November in Australia, Eastern Daylight Saving Time. I've always been calling it Daylight Savings, but apparently that's incorrect. It is Daylight Saving. One of those funny, funny things. Now, I am down moderators today, I think, so please be gentle with me if, uh, if I don't respond quickly enough to everything and uh, if we get any nasties come in. Now, uh, Steve, who is on his sick bed, has said he will try and do what he can. John is out having a barbecue, so he's too busy to help. You know, he calls this show his church. He says to his um, missus, I've got to go off to church now. That's a little bit strange. Anyway, and Carl is, uh, because of the daylight saving shift around, apparently it's changed the session from three hours from what it is during our winter, their summer, to their winter, our summer. So I was not aware that there was two shifts. Anyway, there you go. Uh, I hope everyone is well and uh, that your week has been good. And I'm hoping we're going to have a little bit to do in the show today. I've got a couple of things. I've been under the pump this last week and I wanted to get this video out on the Stanton style uh, go at a track saw, which isn't really a track saw. Basically, it's a board with some dog holes and a piece of T-track mounted down the center, which will guide your conventional circular saw um, to make perfect 90 degree cuts when it's used in conjunction with either my bench or with a board that has been dog holed out with either the UJK path guide system or a CNC routed board that's done in the same pattern. But uh, the whole thing that I'm trying to do here is to create an economy. Now there's a lot of people out there who don't have the same kind of background as I have. I'm a was a licensed builder and I have accumulated a lot of tools over the time because it was part of my income to earn my money with those tools. So hence I bought them. Now I understand there's a lot of people out there who do this for a hobby and you're going to buy a drill, a screwdriver, maybe a power plane and maybe a circular saw and that might be all your kit is, which is fine. It was all my kit was for many, many years. And you might be in a situation where you can spring for a track saw or you may not be. And I totally get that. That's one of the reasons why I did this last video that I released last night. Now, I did have a comment from someone saying that, uh, oh, Dave, the underside of your Bosch saw already has a rebate. Basically, it's a dado in the sole plate of the, pl of the saw. And it could ride on something similar to a track saw. Now, I get that, and yes, it can, but the thing is, I was trying to, that's the only saw that I had lying around, which wasn't a track saw. I'm not saying that as, oh, oh poor Dave, <laughs> far from it. What I'm saying is, I'm trying to get this kit together for a person who doesn't have a garage full of tools, they have a, a hobby set and still be able to come up with some very, very decent results. So whether it's a seven and a half inch saw or a six and a half inch saw, just as long as it's a, a um, circular saw, but there's a couple of things, I don't know if you're aware, but some of the battery saws, the motor is on the opposite side of the, uh, of the saw plate. And so that always strikes me as an interesting thing. Which is the best side for a motor to be? There's a question for you guys. Have a bit of a think about it. Let me know what you feel would be the best way. Because remember, if you're cutting from the outside of a board and tracking down, possibly the motor on the left-hand side might be best. Or on the right-hand side, but have the blade over on the left. Yeah, that might be better. If the motor was on the left-hand side, I don't know. It's, you can see where I'm coming from. I'll grab a motor and I'll show you. Now this is my DeWalt 
called the saw. And I turned this into a track saw many, many years ago. And I even built a shroud around here. And uh, I forget what I called it. <laughs> anyway, it worked well. But the whole thing is the motor is out on this side. So I can cut from the right hand side of a board to the left hand side if I'm ripping because all of the saw plate is out on the motor side. Now with all of my other saws and the track saws included, the motor is out on the left hand side. So I have to kind of khaki hand. I go around to the left hand. I'm not trying to insult people. That is amazing. Thank you so much. Jack Barrett has just done a super chat for me. Thank you, buddy. That's fantastic. You know what? When things like this happen, I, I all of a sudden stop in my tracks, like I am now, and say, um, thank you. I put a lot of effort into into doing this, and when I when something like this happens, it's just nice. You know, it's it's nice. Thank you. Okay, back to where I was. So, if I'm cutting from left to right, it's I'm I'm a little bit back to front, going going that way, where I'd like to be this direction. But if I'm at a bench, and I'm using my right hand, well then yes, I would like to cut. This saw would be the wrong way around. So it's a bit of a hard question. Anyway, what do you reckon? I need to get into the show. I've waffled on. We're almost six minutes in. Let me have a look. All right. Okay, okay. Now, I haven't said hello to anyone yet. I've got a reasonably big show, and I've got a bit of an open-ended situation here. I am going to have a look at tuning my wide drum sander. Now, I have never done that, and this is going to be a learning curve for me and for you guys. <laughs> if I get it wrong, don't crucify me. Just... I've let me get my head around something. I don't normally do something without having done it prior to talking to everyone else. But I thought, live, you know what? Why not? What's the other things I've got on my little list here? Drum sander. I want to talk about the room air filter. And the room air filter at the moment is running. You may hear it in the background. I've got it on low. It's one of those things that if I feel a bit of a tickle in my throat, I turn that thing on straight away. And within five minutes, I don't feel the tickle anymore. It's great. Very important thing. I never really used to rate it, but uh, I do now. I do now. It's all part of the dust extraction system. Fred Robbins, hello from Yarn Hill, Oregon. Uh, Dan's Bush, here, good day, Dave. Love your show. Watching from Houston, Texas. Uh, morning, all. Steve Wallbank, I have a 240 volt skill, 77 worm drive saw with the motor and the right hands. You can't kill the beast. Well, there you go. See, I need you guys to start having a bit of a chat amongst yourselves regarding that in the chat session. And uh, away we go. Oh, the other thing is yesterday I jumped in on Nick Ferry's uh, live stream. It went for about two and a half hours or some crazy amount of time. It was really, really good. Now, I did make comment. They were talking about cleaning rubbish off saw blades for your circular saw. And, you know, when you get a bit of a deposit up from resin and things like that, I'm saying and things like that again. So when you get a deposit from resins, uh, it's always good to clean it off. Now, I did make a stupid comment. I said use oven cleaner. Now, you shouldn't. You shouldn't use oven cleaner. Oven cleaners are designed to clean ovens, and there are specialized products for buying to clean table saw blades, and they will not affect the way that the tungsten tips have been bonded to the steel blade. Now, I noticed there was a couple of people made comment yesterday as well that it's either silver solder or brazed. Does anyone know whether it's silver solder or whether it's brazing or, or are both correct? Or is there another way? Is there a glue of some sort that some companies are using? I'd be interested to know because that will make a difference as to what kind of things you can use to clean the blades. Interesting subject. Quick connect fittings. I also had someone ask me a couple of people, as a matter of fact, asked me a little bit about the dust extraction system in the workshop here and also what type of quick connect fittings I use because I do move one hose amongst three different machines. I might have a nest of machines over here. I have, and I'll spin this around if I can get it around there. You can see I have my jointer, I've got the thickness planer, and also my Powermatic bandsaw over the back there, and they share one hose. Look, let's do that straight off the bat. What do you think? Okay, I'll undo this and I'll show you what I use. That's the hose. 
I've got a glass gate fitted here. It's a metal one because it gets moved around a lot. I don't really want a plastic glass gate that's going to be exposed to as much movement and abuse. And this is what I use. I'll spin this around this way again. All right. Jerry, hey Dave, Steve, most of your saw blades are bronze brazed. Okay. Now this thing here is a rubber boot with a um, thread in the rubber. And so this screws left hand thread onto the end of my flexible hoses. This side pushes over pretty much any four inch fitting that has a little bit of elasticity. And then I use one of these clamps with a thumb screw on it, just to make sure that it doesn't fall off. Because the last thing I want when I'm using the jointer or the thickness planer, particularly the thickness planer, is for the dust line to drop off and possibly cause me a bit of grief. That wouldn't be any fun at all. So that's what I use. That's my very, very happy quick disconnect. There are other ones that are hard plastic that are taper and they're designed to push over an outlet over a four inch outlet and the um, and then the suction obviously from the dust extractor being turned on makes that fitting tighter as it, as it uh, increases the suction. I'm not really a fan of those because it's hard plastic to hard plastic and I don't know if they're machined or or cast or injection molded however they're made um, to create a tight enough seal. That's why I like this one the rubber is like a gasket it pulls on nice and tight so that's that one sorted already. What's the next thing? Next thing, next thing. Uh, the track saw video, yeah, it's going great. It's had about 3,000 views. As I say, I get to see what's happening before you guys do. It's showing probably around about 1,900 views. It's, it's actually more than that. There's a delay as to what you actually say on the page. Next thing. Um, Photo from where you're watching or projects you are building in your shop. This first part, for people that haven't watched the show before, what I normally do is a, a meet and greet and say good day and do some little bits of interesting things at the beginning for the first 15 to 20 minutes. Show some, um, some clips from or some images from viewers and then we'll jump into a bit of demonstration. So as I say, I'm going to show you a little bit about the dust extraction in the room here and also the, uh, the wide drum sander. I'm going to do some tuning on it, which is something that I really should have done when I first bought it, but I don't use it a lot at this stage. I'm going to digress here a little bit as well. What I normally do is I'll buy machines when I have the opportunity. Now, I'm looking at possibly, hopefully, another 20 years on the planet, and I want to kit myself up so that I don't have to expend any money when I am not in a situation where I'm earning any more. Okay, so. That's, that's one of the reasons I do this. I'm in a very good situation to buy machines at the moment, so I'm taking advantage of it. Now, as I say, I haven't tuned it, but we'll give it a shot today. I have used it. It works beautifully. All right, <clears throat> but it, it's not tracking dead straight yet. First thing, let's have a look here. So Andrew Monks is in Hawaii. And what's Andrew got to say there? Uh, hi, Dave. Watching from Hawaii. Uh, love the show. I don't know how long you're over there for, Andrew. I'm hoping it's, uh, I'm hoping the weather's going to pick up a little bit for you. It looked a bit overcast there. You, when I think of Hawaii, I think of it. You know, the girls with all the the uh, coconut bra and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm stuck in the 50s, aren't I? I'm, I'm, uh, I have these images of South Pacific Island movies in black and white. I'm wondering if I'm the only one. Probably not. Uh, let me have a look here what we've got here. Uh, okay, Michael Christopher's does the Flex 100mm dust extractor hose have a wire or plastic coil around it or through it? Now, I have that, that little one that's transparent is wire through it. The grey stuff, which is more rigid, is a plastic core. It's not wire. So it's not going to act as a um, static uh, grounding. But I'll tell you what, just having the wire through as, as a reinforcement in that hose does not mean that it's going to be anti-static. 
it has to be earthed at some point. Now I have got massive belts out of those hoses when I've been doing um, demonstrations that shows if I've been using the Powermatic dust extractor, which sucks like crazy. If it doesn't touch the ground and I walk past it, if it because those hose ten, hoses tend to pull pull themselves up off the ground when you turn them on, uh, they shrink down to a very short length with the suction. Uh, I get massive belts out of them. But if it's grounded like I've got with my system in here, which I'll show you again, because some people have said, Dave, we don't we miss the part where you do the grounding. Uh, nothing from it, absolutely nothing, which is great. Yes, Michael, it is carpet. Morning, Zane, uh, sitting in the garden at Rose Sedler House. Beautiful weather in Sydney. Oh, that's lovely. How cool is that? Uh, like the track saw, do you, Ian? Uh, do you think the bench similar to MFT can replace a table saw from Vitaly? Uh, probably not. Probably not. Table saws, you can do all sorts of things. You can put sleds over the top and make all sorts of it wind wonderful kind of things. It's, you know, table saws, the heart of the workshop. But this is for people that don't have table saws. Bob Macker, how are you? Uh, Don from Western Australia. Uh, Pete from Brisbane. Touch of Lightning, uh, Adventures in Paradise for Stephen. Yes. Uh, going to Earth to shed support. Right. Okay. All right. Next thing. Next thing, next thing. Where are we up to? Viewers, 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 viewers. Let me get out of there and we'll go to seeing Bob's walk, walked in the door. Let's throw Bob's on right now. Now, Bob has been setting up some dust extraction in his place. So let's have a quick look at that. So Bob McIntyre. Okay, pretty much finished my setup with the new Cyclone and it's sucking hard, especially with the new cartridge car type filter. This is that's the uh, new cyclone he's got sitting there. Uh, the system ended up the furthest connection 0.6 meters away from the cyclone, so I came out of a six inch and straight to a wide with four inch outlets. Use mixture of PVC and flex pipe. Thickness around jointer stay where situated, unless dressing very long timber. Machines clumped together um, a round bandsaw similar to yours. I found this works well, especially given I've not met much space in my shed. Bandsaw stays in situ unless have to use jointer, then just wheel it aside slightly. So those, these I didn't have to move, just modified the dust collection unit. Must say I tried another location at the end of the garage, but that extended the pipe run by five meters. So I wasn't happy and thus pre present location, which is back where I started. Now, how many times has that happened to people? Um, now also he says, I've tried some expandable kitchen aluminium ducting uh, three meters at Penrith Bunnings for $25. Five inch works great for between dust extractor, motor outlet and filter and plastic bag stand. Quite solid and fire resistant. It is fine for air blowing through, but not sure about how it would go in the suction. So that's terrific. How cool is that? That's great when, um, when people share what they're doing in their own shed. It's, uh, it's one of the reasons we're all here, isn't it? What do we got here? Uh, Wayne, <laughs> thank you so much for that. That's another super chat. You guys are going to make me cry. <laughs> um, Dave, how have you grounded the hose? Okay, Dens, just keep watching and I'll get to that very soon. I'm going to talk about how I've done the grounding system again. I've talked about it a few times, but I understand that there's new people coming in all the time. So I'll go through it in the show. Uh, Peter, John Lefty, thumbs up, people. John, what are you doing in here? I thought you were at a barbecue. <laughs> All right. I need to refresh something here on this other machine. Give me a second, guys. Um, I don't know why it's not doing it, but apparently it's not. Now, I don't know if any moderators, if you're a moderator out there, send me a quick uh, thing so I can check whether this little system down here is working. All right. Okay. And the next one, next one. Brandon Schaefer has made a an interesting clock. 
Now, Brandon has a only very short, quick description. He says three feet wall clock. Now, that's got to be three feet in diameter. That is massive. Brandon, where do you get the hands for something that size? They're almost like the propeller off an aeroplane. What's the next thing we've got here? And thanks again, Brandon, for sending that in. The next one is uh, Ian Kerry. We'll keep it in Australia. Ian is uh, local up here in the mountains as well. And he's doing something to a DeWalt. Let me see what it is. Here, g'day, Dave. A couple of pics of the finished rolling cabinet with the DeWalt mounted. Oh, it's a rotary alarm saw. I have used some veneered board on the drawer fronts because I already had it, along with the brass drawer handles to maintain the theme of the shop. Next thing, remake the saw table, saw's table and realign the whole saw, which has seen plenty of work, but is in good condition overall. You are not alone in loving the smell of camphor laurel. You'll notice that I have a scrap on the saw table that gets cut just for that reason. So are we both crazy? Well, I think we are. What a great little project. I tell you what, having my machines on top of uh, these mobile carts makes such a big difference. I can put them anywhere around the workshop I want. The drum sander is on one at the moment, and you'll see I've just wheeled it up from the wall. So easy. Park it up against the wall gives me plenty of space. Even though I've got a lot of space, it's giving me a whole lot more space that I can use. The last one is Dave from Minnesota. Let's pop his on. It's not a whole lot in this one, but it's... Uh, it's, it's a nice result. Have a look at this. Uh, hi, Dave. Love your material. I hope you don't mind, but I'm building a new shop and it's going to have plenty of your shop built into it. They say that one should be flat when they're like well enough for people to copy. Well, there you go. Thanks for that. Wondering about your floor, just AC sanded plywood. How did you go about finishing it? I appreciate your help. I'll answer that in a second. This looks like good stuff. Thank you for the info. I'm still working a day job, so the shop will be quiet will be quite a work in progress. I'm hiring a contractor to build the shop, sheetrock walls, uh, to build the shop to sheetrock walls and tongue and groove flooring. The rest will be me. I'm planning on dust collection in one corner and going to run my main duct into the ceiling, then have drops in strategic locations. New shop is getting close to move in. Uh, it's 16 by 26 feet off the back of my garage. Stay tuned as I move in and build it out. As a new retiree, I sh it should be fun and rewarding place to spend time. Dave from Minnesota. That is brilliant. What do you think of that cabinet he's got over the side there? That is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, Dave, thank you so much for sending that stuff in to me. Now you ask what type of floor I've got. It is 17 millimeter thick radiata pine ply flooring. It's specifically designed for flooring. It is tongue and grooved, so it interlocks. And before I laid it, I've had it all upside down and I coat it with a thing called copper naphthalate. Now the reason being this is quite a damp area and also we do have white ants in the area. So that's what's on the underside to, it's, it's heavy duty stuff, I don't know if you can buy it anymore, but that's what's there. Uh, okay, let me read down again and Jim Carroll, let's make time in Brisbane sell the high torque movements and hands. Okay, they've got the large ones, beautiful. Let's make time, but thanks for that, Jim. Uh, Zane, enjoy the rest of the show. Have to drive back to Canberra now. Okay, <laughs> thanks for dropping in. Next thing, next thing, we're just about done. I think I've done all of the, uh, the people that have sent stuff into us. How are we doing for the show? We've got plenty of thumbs up. Is there still plenty of people watching? As I say, I wanted to get through these things from viewers first, and then I wanted to talk about my dust extraction, which is what's going to be the next thing. I'm running, <laughs> I'm running off this this list here. Um, another round, dust extraction, play around with 400. Uh, yeah, the thing I say each week, keep the channel afloat if you can. If you can help me out that way, that's great. As I say, the money doesn't go into my pocket. It goes into doing stuff here that I can produce this show for you. If I need to buy something for the show, I go out and buy it. Um, now, I did have one subscriber get in touch with me and say, Dave, how about you suggest to people that if they use your Amazon link to jump into Amazon and buy whatever they want, which obviously helps the show, how about they create a shortcut for it on their toolbar or on their desktop? 
So anytime they want to go shopping on Amazon, they don't even have to have the show running or open anything there. They just go directly to that link, click on it, and take them straight in on that particular item. I think at the moment it's a uh, Craig Bench Clamp. Once they're in there, do the search for whatever they want from Amazon, and away they go. I thought that was a fantastic idea. Thank you so much for thinking about me. Um, honestly, guys, if you want to do it, that's great. If you don't want to do it, I'm not begging, but uh, it helps the show. All right, let's. I keep saying let's as well. Dust extraction. I'll slide this around. <laughs> All right. Can you see down the end there? Let's have a look. Now, I'm going to go down the end, and I'll show you where this dust extraction starts off from. I'll bring the, I'll bring the camera down. The reason being... It's easier for you to hear me. The dulcet tones of Dave Stanton. There you go. That might be a bit. That might be a bit better. All right. The heart of my dust extraction system is the impeller and the motor above. This is the fan that creates the low pressure everywhere else. Basically, all it's doing is pushing air out there, which is creating a low pressure zone over here, which in fact is suction. The atmosphere is pushing down into all of the open blast gates, pushing through the line and going into the cyclone, spinning out all of the dust, chips, whatever I'm sucking up from any machine. The almost clean air, and I must remind you it's almost clean air, then travels up through the impeller and out the wall. Now, on the outside of the building here, and I, as I say, I'm fortunate I'm on a couple of acres. I don't have neighbors who have washing online or anything like that. Anything like that, I'm saying it again. I have neighbors, I, there are no neighbors here who may have their clothes washing on a clothesline. So I'm not gonna piss anyone off, basically. Very, very little dust goes out there unless, unless, I forget to empty this drum. Now on the top, I have an inspection hole here, which I undo this lid, and I can have a look down inside and see the level of the sawdust in there. At the moment, it's around about two thirds full, nearly time for me to tip it out. I am thinking about putting a Perspex window down the side here, vertically. I haven't seen it done like that before. I've seen it done sideways, but I haven't seen a vertical window. That would show me all the way down where my dust level is. It look, it's like snow. If, honestly, if I've been running something like radiata pine through the thickness plane, the, the result is there is outside, <laughs> it's totally white. It's like Christmas in Europe. All right, so beside it, I have a automatic switch. Now this is designed specifically for using with a machine that has the ampage startup that that impeller has got. This is a two horse machine. They have what's called a magnetic switch. If the machine has been undone from the power point or the general purpose outlet, whatever you guys want to call it, and it was undone while the machine was turned on, it would trip the machine switch to off. So it must have that electromagnetic switch happening. As soon as the power's turned off from before, it defaults back to being turned off. So it makes it safe for if someone plugs it in and got their finger in the impeller for whatever reason, it's not going to turn on. Bit of an interesting thing there. So this switch, as I say, works off infrared. So it's direct line of sight and it must be, um, well, as I say, it must be direct line of sight. And it just so happens that my the remote for the TV also activates it. Now from here, there are two blast gates. There's two big steel and aluminium blast gates on either run. You'll notice there's a five inch line and a five inch Y, five inch line up above me, and a five inch line drops down under the cabinet here. Let's deal with this side first. Under the cabinet, it runs along behind the plinth. So actually behind the kickboard. Under this cabinet, there are three supports. Two of them are the plinth that the cabinet sits on, 
and then out the front is another one, which is the kickboard, which hides the dust line. So they're all screwed in, so I can undo that kickboard at the front. The cabinets won't fall over. I'll make sure of that. And then I can work on any of the lines. And it's particularly when I had a little small scare with a fire, I checked everything all the way through to make sure that there was no embers anywhere through the system. All of my system I can expose it if I need to. So from here it drops under the floor and up under the table saw where the camera is sitting on at the moment. And also I built a switch under there which will stop it from going to the table saw over to the router table. So that's the, the cabinet that the router table is sitting in has a dust extraction port in the cabinet. I also use an overhead as well for the table saw and also for the router. Then further down here, let's spin this around, is the capex. Now the capex has its own dust extraction system running through my high pressure, low volume system, which is basically my Ryobi shop vac under the here, or dust extractor. I'm not allowed to say shop vac, it's a brand name. The five inch line comes through behind the plinth, comes up under the capex, and you notice here, I don't know if you can see it, yep, just there, there is a, a box that the capex is sitting on. Now the box has got a five inch hole in it and another five inch blast gate underneath. So I can open it or close it. How about I show you? All right, you may not be able to see it too well, but believe me, there's a blast gate under there. And at the back, Behind the saw, you'll see there's a slot. See that slot at the back? And that runs the full width across the back. So, tip this up a little. And that is to keep the well clean. Before, before I did this, this well used to fill up with sawdust big time and it'd be coming up over the top. And apart from ticking me off because it wasn't tidy and that's what I'm like, it was making it very hard for any sideways motion on the, on the table, on the turntable for changing the angle when I'm doing a standard cut. Also it makes it, obviously if it was a compound cut, it'd still be the same kind of thing, it'd be ticking me off. Sawdust when it gets caught in there does slow to swell up when it gets oil and uh, just inhibits the movement a lot. And also things, things like the sawdust collecting oil also will catch little bits of grit and sand. You know, there's, there's rubbish in the air all over the place. So that's one of the reasons why I've got that at the back there. Uh, the other thing, of course, is I have to actually remember, I'm watching the time so I have to actually remember to open the blast gates. And so <laughs> this morning when I was setting up for the dust, for the WDS 400, put the dust on there and I was looking around. I think right now I've got this side shut off. Uh, where are all the dust ports on here? So I've got one going to the floor over there. I've got one going to the drum sander. I've got one over the top here of the table saw. I've got another one down the end here that I took that boot off, which I better replace. I'll do that right now. Bring this around here. And one down there. All right, but I've taken the boot off, which services all these machines. So it's, it's all well and good to have all this gear, but you really do need to keep on top of what's happening. Please just screw on. I love them. These boots are fantastic. You can get them all different sizes as well and they sell out really quickly. So if you want to get one, make sure, if you're going to get one from where I work, you need to get in touch with them, place an order on the web, and that will automatically get one down for you when you when come in. There's nothing worse. I noticed there's been a bit of chat this morning on Facebook about, and yesterday, about people being ticked off. You know, they, they drive a long distance to get somewhere to buy some product, and when they get there, it's not as they thought it was going to happen. So. My suggestion, this has nothing to do with the show, it's just my suggestion is place your orders online and then they'll call you and let you know when it's ready to pick up. That's going to be the easiest way 
No one else involved in it, just yourself and the computer. Spin this around that way. Oh dear. Uh, where are we? Um, <laughs> yes, I get a little bit older tomorrow. Um, thank you for the birthday wishes. Uh, Angler, yes. Uh, Zane, happy birthday, Dave. Um, worked out with the phone connected to. Uh, Uh, is held for review. Yeah, you know what? I'll show that message. Why not? Um, open that up here. And where do I leave my glasses? Over here. All right. It's a bit hard when I'm trying to read the messages as well. Sorry, guys, if I've dropped back into a bit of the old format. But I knew that this today was going to be a slightly ticklish day because uh, I have a few people that may not be able to dismiss that who could uh, help me as much as I was uh, I, that I might have hoped for. Anyway, not to worry. Uh, you can blast the sound through the car. Well, there you go. That's fantastic. Um, if you want to. <laughs> uh, not a day over 45. That's right, Stuart. Uh, the thumbs up. Da -da -da -da. Yes, thank you uh, for that. Know what mum wants. Oh, mum, what, <laughs> what mum wants. <laughs> know what mum knows. Uh, Stephen, commiserations on your birthday. I hope you have a good day anyway. Jay Perry, you didn't tell us about your birthday. Happy birthday. Bob Macker, thanks for the dust extraction. Overview, Dave. Not a problem. Now, Bob, I haven't talked about the dust line down the center. So I'll do a quick talk about that, then we'll jump onto the WDS 400. Spin this around and aim it up there. You may or may not be able to see what I'm talking about here. The flexible line comes up to a standard PVC 4-inch pipe. Now, in Australia, we refer to this as 4-inch sewer because that's what it's used for. It's the sewer lines. Uh, now, every two feet along this PVC line, I've put a 5 millimeter hole on the side and put a Euro, uh, sorry, a Euro screw, which is a very flat, broad screw and that acts as a lightning conductor, which collects static or is earthing the pipe. It's earthing it in two ways. It's, it's a lightning conductor that goes through the wall of the PVC because the PVC is actually uh, an insulator. So I have the grounding cable wrapped around, round and around right the way back to the impeller on the dust extractor and it's connected via a screw through the steel into the impeller's housing and that is earthing out through the electrical system on the property into a grounding rod into the ground. Now it finishes about here. So as I say, it's collecting any static discharge that might be happening down the middle and also wrapped around the outside, it's getting rid of any static that might be collecting on the outside of the pipe. As a result, Whenever I touch this pipe now, I don't ever get a belt out of it. And I used to, believe me, I used to. The hairs on my arm used to stick up as I would walk past this pipe. And it just doesn't do it anymore. I've had some people say, Dave, I've never experienced that. Thank you, Peter. That's very generous of you. Uh, spin this around this way again. And down... Yes, yeah, so I've had people say that they've never experienced that, and I totally get that. Uh, depends on the speed, the velocity of the air is tracking through the pipes. In industrial situations, I do know a fireman, and well, most people would know a fireman, and he uh, he said the amount of uh, 
fires that he has to attend in a place called Weatherall Park, which is an industrial area near Sydney, uh, through dust extraction systems is unbelievable. He said it happens all the time. So they're going to have a whole lot more velocity. Their machines are going to make my dust extractor look like a toy. So the air pulling through those would be immense. And of course, you're going to get a massive static discharge through those if you're not careful. All right. Uh, Cove Dixon, hi. Patrick Mayer, happy birthday from Ireland, Dave. I personally like the old format of your show. Keep up the good work. Okay, well, thank you for that. Now over to the WDS 400 as promised. Whoop, sorry about that. Hey, hey, hey. Collision there with the camera. I need to make sure that I'm around the other side. Are you giddy yet? Are you giddy? Now, there we go. That is the machine. I will bring my coffee over there as well. And see if you can see me from there. Yeah, close enough. I think I had it sitting on there and slightly up. All right, now you'll see that I've got a couple of things on the bench beside it. On the router table here, I've got a couple of Allen keys. I've got the instruction manual. I've got the shims. I've got a um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Just shims has got a couple of means. These are shims for putting in between the base plate of the of the machine and the support for the conveyor spanner. And also, they send you a piece of plywood. To put through to check the height to either side of the machine as you're going through. Now there is an instruction book here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is wind the machine down. I had to change the dust attraction port a little bit. I put a two and a half inch to four inch converter and then put my quick connect onto there. Inside there's the drum and I've cleaned half of it so again with the belt cleaning stick these things are invaluable if you've got any sanding machine that you know of a large size i use it on this i use it on that i used it on my disc and belt sander when i had it uh, and i use it on the spindle sander the bobbin sander as well and where's great all right first thing i'm going to do is turn it on whenever you turn on one of these machines i think i made comment losing weight it does fall enough uh, I think I made a comment the other day that if you've got a machine with a conveyor belt on it, well, no, sorry, it was the um, scroll saw. Always turn the machine's variable speed up to full bore when you first turn it on. I'll turn it up to full bore. It's running the conveyor belt is pulling. I can turn it down. The drum is still going to turn at the same speed always. It's just the speed of the conveyor belt that I'm adjusting here. Okay, there's lesson one. Try and keep the speed up flat out, especially if you're using softwoods that have got any resin in them. The reason being, and I was told this by a few people that know their stuff, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a total novice with drum sanders, so I'll tell you that right at the beginning, but people that know their stuff have said, Dave, if you're doing stuff with resin in it, make sure that you've got your conveyor belt up fast because otherwise the resin will deposit on here on the, on the uh, drum big time and will start burning. Now it's not going to catch fire straight away, it might eventually, but what that does is it'll leave horrible marks on your timber as you're going through. Now the whole thing with a sander is to make the job nice, not to make it look worse. So I'll set the height. I have the dust extractor set up as well to go. Have I got the remote? Yes I have, see? I just use this for, and don't things on there, turn that on. No more remote for the telly. Okay, height, height, height. Now there is no clamp locking this in position. You notice with my thicknesses, there's, I lock the height with the drum sander, I don't have that. I shall lower it down and I'm gonna use, the scale is slightly adjustable as well. I'll take it down. That is going to be three eighths of an inch, which is 
close enough to 10 millimeters. And I'm going to sight through here. until the rollers almost engage. That's looking pretty good. And out there, now straight away, I can see that there's the slightest difference. I think I've got, from left to right, I think I've got about a sixteenth of variance. So I will I'm not even going to start the machine, I'm going to disconnect it. And I've got that variance, it's thicker, if the gap is larger down here than it is here. So I need to shim this side. Here are the shims. It's a great little system. The newer machines I've seen have a little knob there that you adjust, and that does all the adjustment for you. Other machines I've seen, they, the uh, gantry moves left and right. Now I think these are going to be very similar size all the way through. If I read the book it would probably say Dave. They're all the same thickness. They look like they're all out of the same thickness material. Now I said about a sixteenth so I think that'll be two. Now forgive me if I'm talking in Imperial but I my mind just does that. I switch backwards and forwards between Imperial and Metric. Oh gee that was, that was a nice tight one. I can't say the fellas at the factory but slack putting this together. That is rather tight. Now honestly, I'm happier having this side to work on rather than having to work on the other side. You know why? It's a lot more mucking around to get the shim on that side. Now, like that, I can... Can you see I've got that little bit of adjustment there? You can hear it for sure. Give me a second. The Shane, you're asking about if the two horse motor is powerful enough for that run. Uh, yes, it is, mate. It works brilliantly. If you've watched any of the videos, you'll see there's not much comes out beside those machines. Uh, you didn't bin the destructions. No, I didn't. Uh, Spanner, okay, da da da, but so instructions in method make for a good file. <laughs> you guys, don't throw your instructions away. Well, you know the rule. If all else fails, read the instructions. I haven't read them yet. <laughs> I'm still going well. So we'll just use them. I might use them to pack something up in the short corner of the shop one day. Okay, still keep on doing these. And that should be enough. That's great. So I'm going to put two shims wherever I put them, there they are, under there. Lift it up and slide them under. And now tighten those down again. I guess I should have drawn one shim at a time, but having a quick look underneath at the, the belt, I thought two might be best. Now, if you guys have got one of these machines and you've done this before and there's any tips that you can give me, by all means do it. I'd love to hear. I'm, I'm just work, you know, going freehand here. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. All right, now I'm going to have a look under there again. You know what? If that's done it off the bat, I'll, I'll be amazed. All right, I'm going to plug the machine back in. And as always, when I turn these machines on, it'll be a little bit noisier at the beginning, and then the microphone on that camera will adjust things. But I will also sound like I'm some kind of a person talking underwater. So if I start talking, either ignore me, because I just tend to talk always. And <laughs> if you can understand what I'm saying, that's great. First thing I'm going to do is put the dust extractor on, then I'll turn this guy on. The reason being, I think I'm on two different circuits here, but that pulls big ampage on its startup, but not a lot of amps while it's running. I always turn the dust extractor on first.
I think I've been really tinny here. I think I've flipped it straight off the bat. But that's two individual pieces either side. I'm going to put a wider piece through and see if it's going to be consistent right across the cut. What have I got? Give me a second, guys. Now, when I say guys, I mean girls and guys. I'm not. Guys is just a term in Australia where we it's, it's a non-sex statement. Have I got? Okay, I've got a bit of radio out of it. Now this is a wide board of radio out of pine. Pretty clear. It does have a slight bow, but the sander may pull that down. So it's got a, not a bow, it's got a slight cup. Now that is, I need to measure that. <sighs> what have we got there? That is finishing 13 millimeters, so it's just over half an inch in Imperial language. Um, <clears throat> has anyone got the Stanton bench plans yet? I've been so fortunate. Steve Innes has gone out of his way to help me out with that. It's just fantastic. Such a generous person. Um, the plans, I think, will be available through TSO products very, very soon as well. And they're people who are just helping me out. It's fantastic. I'll tell you what, I'm a very, very fortunate fellow. All right, we're back to that. So, as I said, they've been done um, on SketchUp. And so they're super easy to follow. Steve's done a magic job. Also, I've put a shopping list on there as well. So if you want to get any of the stuff, you can either buy it locally through any of the stores near you, or you can use my affiliate links with Amazon. There we go. Again, I'm not pushing, I'm not pushing. Just conversation while I'm doing all this.
to merge it. What a difference. That's tracking extremely well. It still has the cup. I can I know that. But the the distance to and I can feel the abrasive, which is a coarse is coarse abrasion, coarse abrasive in comparison to how the timber was already finished. So I can feel where the sanding is starting to happen. It's equidistant from either side. So I'm very happy with that. Now, the, one of the other things I was told with the drum sander is it's not a thickness so by any stretch of the imagination. What it does, it sands. And it's not going to take everything off in one pass. You know, you spend a fair while sanding a job. So I've been told when you get it to the, the right height, run it through three or four times at that one height before you lower the drum head down again. Otherwise, you're going to stress the machine and you'll end up, the gantry will get, you know, pushing off the timber. It's just not going to work. Let the thing sand. It's like comparing letting a sander just do the work without pushing on it or leaning on it. You know, it's, there's, there's different schools of thought, but the best thing to do is just to let the sander do its job, let it do its cutting. Let's have a look at the paper. Look at that. No residue on there whatsoever. I should have really unplugged it before I did that, but be aware these things can cut you. If you get your finger stuck in there while well, it spins, it's going to take skin off so quick. It would be worse than coming off a motorbike. All right, so that's about that for for the adjusting the drum. That was easy, dead easy. I was panicking. You know, it's one of those jobs that I thought, I don't really want to do it. Uh, I might stuff it up. But I also find that I've got the personality that once I get started, I don't I don't like to accept <laughs> defeat. I like to get going, no matter even if I destroy the thing <laughs> or make it better. Is there any, are any of you guys like that at all? All right, I'll put all that back a little bit later on. But how good is the dust attraction? That worked brilliantly. I'm directly under the room air filter above me. The light is fantastic. I'm, I'm not noticing any difference in the way that I'm breathing. I'm not getting a tickle in my throat. This is doing stuff which is taking off fines. I'm guessing if I was to do a run, like a, a heap of sanding, yes, the helmet would go straight on or the path deck would go on. And I would probably open doors as well, but it's been raining lately, so I haven't got those open. Let's slide back over to here because I think you'll find that we're just about done for time. Mm. All right, where are we up to? Another, <laughs> another super chat. Thank you so much for the for your generosity. It's unbelievable. Uh, where are we? Uh, thank you, thank you, Dens Bushby. Uh, you worked hard. No luck at all. Well, thank you, James West, Osgabo Productions. Yes, I didn't come at the end of stream today. Good. Uh, Peter, come on, guys. 94 watching, 9045 thumbs up. Uh, wow. How are you, Dave, and your wife? My wife and I are very, very well. Vicky is just, I'm a lucky, lucky man. She's a beautiful woman. Um, she was hard at work last night. I couldn't believe it. She, I was trying to finish off this video. I normally release a video once a week at the same time and uh, it was getting close to deadline and I don't have fast internet so I've got to allow myself three hours prior to it actually going live so I can act, upload because it was nearly a gig and uh, she was madly cleaning, vacuuming the floor, she was being the real domestic goddess. We don't have, we don't apportion tasks in our family if the floor needs vacuuming, either she'll, she'll do it or I'll do it. You know, it's not a matter of why haven't you done that? We don't do that at all. Vacuuming, uh, washing up, clothes washing, anything that he's doing, gardening, we just muck in and do it together. All right, where are we up to? Did you hear the chime there? That's saying it's 12 o'clock. And I'll have a look here. Uh, what grit are you using? I think in there it was 80 grit. I could go 120. Um, but, 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 you know, it's fine. All right, where are we up to now? Happy birthday, Dave. Have a great day. Uh, crash, 
crash or crash through, Dave. Only problem is getting started. Exactly right, getting started. And do you find, Stephen, as you're getting older, it's harder to get motivated to get off your tail and do that first step. Once you do the first step, away you go and it's flying along. It reminds me of uh, one of the episodes of Lord of the Rings where um, the, the two hobbits were at the top of this mountain and one of the Frodo was saying, oh, I can't go in anymore, I can't go anywhere. He says, right, well, how about, because I yeah, haven't gone up to this mountain. And, you know, this is only for people that are into Lord of the Rings. And this guy with him says, uh, look, first thing we'll do is we'll go down this hill and then see where how we're feeling then. And that's how I look at things now. I break it up rather than looking at the whole task. It becomes overwhelming. I look at one part of the time and move for on from that. There we go. Okay. Uh, happy birthday, Dave. Great day. Uh, Remerson, very shop proud, which I appreciate that I'm starting the first shop space. Gotten some great ideas from your channel. That's great. I'm so happy to have helped. Uh, Russ, happy birthday, Dave. Have, have a great day tomorrow. Uh, has your shop design come simply from experience or do you have any specific inspiration or philosophy you followed? Interesting question. There was one post on Mark Spagnuolo's site, The Wood Whisperer, and it was a guy who had built this beautiful workshop under his basement. And he had this wall of festool and piping and he makes my shop look pov. Honestly, it really does. And I looked at that and he had every beautiful edge work around all his plywood. He had laminate tops and I thought, you know, I want that. And so if people are following on from what I've done, that's great. I'm more than happy for you to copy it. If uh, you need to design the layout, what I used was Grizzly Tools uh, Shop Layout Tool. And it is fantastic. So if you're buying Carpetech machines, be aware that the Grizzly Tools are almost the same thing. So they have a library of all of those machines and you just drag and drop, drag and drop, move them around wherever you want. You can make benches. It's a fantastic tool. I highly recommend it. Um, James, happy birthday. Have a cold one, Dave. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Body groans a lot, Steve. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you very much for all the... Uh, for the generosity with the smart chat smart chat and also as i say if you want to use the affiliate links and do a copy and post it up on your uh, address toolbar that is fantastic as well because that is something that's not costing you a cent the, sh the show gets advantage of it definitely but it's that's just the way amazon works if you want the product they've got a pretty good price on things and it helps me out so thanks again for watching I shall see you next week. I'm hoping so, if I'm still here, God willing. And uh, have a great week. Stay safe. And I shall see everyone next week. And hopefully we'll get another video out as well.